uh, I now call upon uh, Dr. Suvira Jain. Suvira heads the uh, FACO uh, department in Haji Bachioli Hospital in Bombay. She is handheld and taught FACO to quite a few people in this conference. And she's had at least 800 fellows under her who undergone the FAQ training from Suvira. So now in our practice, very often we have a scenario where a patient has uh, already got one eye operated with a monofocal IOL. And mm -hmm. having heard about multifocal IOLs, about independence from glasses from others, some of their colleagues, some of their friends, they want to know, they come to you and ask you for a multifocal IOL in the second eye. So Suvira is going to tell us what to do in whenever this, these patients, the two eyes are not in sync. That is a patient with a monofocal IOL desi desires a multifocal IOL in the fellow eye. Will you do it or will you refuse? Over to you, Suvira. So, are multifocal IOLs a viable option for a patient who's had a monofocal IOL implant in the first eye? So here's the scenario. The patient has had a monofocal IOL implant done a few months, maybe a few years ago. He's dissatisfied with his near vision. He has come to you with an operable cataract, and now he's saying, Doc, can you put an IOL in my other eye that will enable me see better for near? So the question asked to me is, would I consider implanting a multifocal IOL in this second eye or not? And my answer is, yes, I would. Uh, having decided that I'm going to go ahead and do it, these are the various things that I need to consider. First, remember that there's very little literature talking about the quality of vision, the binocular quality of vision with a patient with a monofocal in one eye and a multifocal in the other eye. Having decided that I can go ahead with it, these are all the points that I take into consideration. The first and the most important is a thorough evaluation of the quality of vision in the patient's first operated monofocal eye. So what do I need to look at? I need to look at what is his uncorrected visual acuity for distance, what is the refractive correction he needs for distance in that eye? What does he think is his quality of vision overall? And which of his visual needs are left unfulfilled? We are sure that he's come to you, he can't see for near, but what of his even distant visual needs may or may not be completely met? And therefore, we have to now look at which are the options of presbyopia correcting lenses that we can consider in this patient. Largely, they are divided into two categories. It could be either the multifocal IOLs or the extended depth of focus IOLs. Now, to me, the decision largely rests on what is the refractive status of the patient's first eye. Is the patient emetropic or does he have a residual refractive error? Let's take the first consideration. If the patient is emetropic for distance, which means he's 20-20 happy for distance, which means all his distance visual needs are met. So I no longer have to worry too much about getting a 6-6 six, six in the other eye. I don't have to at least be paranoid about it. He's happy with the 6-6 six, six in the other eye. So now I would choose a lens that would enable me get him an N6 for near. Because people who pay for multifocality are very likely to not be able to accept suboptimal near vision. So I would choose a lens that would enable him get an N6 in my hands, right? So now, again, we go through the two options. Why would multifocal IOL possibly be my first choice? Because with a multifocal IOL, if, assuming you get your biometry right with your experience and expertise and getting it done at various places, if you can get your biometry right, I'm going to be able to give him a 6-6 six, six for distance and an N6 for near. There's no compromise in his distance that I need to do to play around with his near vision. That's where a multifocal lens scores. But the demerits are, of course, as Warren Hill says, we buy the depth of focus by paying with the currency of contrast. The fact that he's going to have slightly reduced brightness overall, that vaxi vision, which is here to stay. And of course, because of the diffractive rings, there would be some amount of photic phenomena which would subject to neuroadaptation wane over time. Again, when we look at the multifocals today, I don't know whether how many of us still consider just the bifocal lenses. With the trifocals coming in into the market, by being able to provide an intermediate focus for intermediate vision, 
you know, we get that constant range of vision, which is very good because we do know that almost 80 to 85% of all our near activities take place at 60 centimeters. So a, mono, a, a bifocal lens which corrects you for distance and one point at 33, 40 for near, I think is no longer meets the standard of near and intermediate vision that most of us want, whether it's signing checks, counting money, searching for keys, Opening, opening a lock, looking at a chai made, for me looking whether it's rai or whether it's tea leaves, all of that at 60 centimeters is very, very important, seeing people, people seeing their own food. So I think if we must be able to provide that intermediate range of vision for our, all our patients, and that's where I think trifocal score, but it also has a better light energy distribution, therefore the contrast is also less. Now we are coming, we're still talking about the same patient the patient who's got 20-20 for distance. Now, the other equally interesting option is the EDOF lens, so the extended depth of focus lens. But I'll talk about them a little later, the, the specific ones. But with these lenses, uh, the biggest advantage is that neuroadaptation, photic phenomena may not be an issue. The drop in contrast won't be an issue because there are no rings here. But and with a little bit of micro monovision, that means if you aim for like a minus half or a minus 0.75, uh, N6 is achievable, which is what he came to you for. So why this would also be an option would be pro because he's 20-20 in the other eye. So being 20-20 in the other eye, even if you leave him with a 6-9 or a 6-9 part, 20-40 part in this eye with the micro monovision, you're going to be able to achieve your N6, gently speaking. My choice, personally, I would still be brave enough and I would put in a trifocal because I would want to give him 20-20 and an N6. However, if there's a patient who is very fussy, comes with 10 pairs of glasses, says what neuroadaptation, refuses to think that rings are an option, needs a lot of night driving, very, very fussy and anxious, then in that patient, despite a 20-20 in the other eye, uh, my first choice only then would possibly be an EDOF lens. Now we come to the scenario number two. This is the only of the two scenarios. Now the patient has got a residual refractive error. I feel that when a patient has got a residual refractive error, again, there are two things to consider. There are a lot of people with 6'9", 6'12", vision who are happy. But their visual needs are met. Say, doc, I can see everything I do. They can even drive, they can see people far away, they can look at hoardings, they can watch the television. Well, they don't have any issues. So I take, make it a point to, after examining and coming to the point that even that he does have a residual refractive error, which of his needs are unmet for distance? The second scenario would be somebody who's got, again, say a 6, 9, 6, 12, and requires like a minus 1 or a plus 1 or any kind of refractive error, but without wearing those glasses, say he's a minus 1. Like my cousin, for instance, he can't see hoardings. There are people who can't see the Netflix print on the television. So their distance visual need is not met. This is the second of the second scenario. He's not 20-20 for distance. He needs glasses for some work. Though he's come to you only seeking spectacle independence for near, you're going, what, what, so what would I do in a case like this? I, my first choice here would be a trifocal lens. Whether or not a patient complains of distant symptoms, if uh, distant visual symptoms, if I find a suboptimal vision, Definitely, if he's symptomatic for distance or requires glasses for some activities, I would aim for a trifocal IOL because I would want to take care of the, you know, the unmet visual needs for distance, which might be there, which is not too much of a problem to him, and give him an N6 veneer. I'd be able to give him both if I thought of a trifocal lens. My second cho choice would be an extended depth of focus IOL. Yeah, but in a case like this, to achieve an N6, Almost always, I'd have to leave the patient myopic by minus 0.5 or minus 0.75. Now, that may not necessarily be bad, especially if it's a patient who is quite happy for his distance vision, even with a 612 or 69. Leaving him myopic by 0.5 or 0.75, I'd still give him a 69, 69 part for distance. Anyway, I you know he's quite happy with the other eye with this vision. And then I might consider giving him. Uh, EDOF lens to give him an N6, but I would work him up to try and aim for an N6 for near. Perhaps in a patient like this, I might consider discussing laser vision correction at a later date, uh, because suppose eventually what I get leaves him still not 100% for distance and for some reason dissatisfied, I might want to have just spoken about it later. And definitely I think of EDOF for a patient 
even with suboptimal distance vision, if he's the typical fussy type A, refusing to accept that neuroadaptation may take time, or someone who may need to uh, drive at night. I think our choice of lenses, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, um, of course, all the companies talk to us about all the different lenses, but I think we tend to use lenses which, which we get the best results, okay? So when we are thinking of a multifocal or trifocal lens, I, uh, you could have the Zeiss trifocal, which claims to have excellent optical efficiency, the third focal point we spoke about, precision astigmatic control. You could go with the panoptics, which is the only US FDA approved lens, which claims to be the only lens that gives you the intermediate focus at 60. But I think eventually we choose a lens wherein we get. So my personal choice tends to be, I tend to go with a Zeiss trifocal because the way I work out my biometry, discuss with the company person, and you should discuss with them. They know things that we don't. They have more experience with many other users. I'm able to hit my 6 6 and 6 target. And that doesn't necessitate that I need to be a great surgeon. I need to be a great person, great doctor who can work up patients well to aim to get the right uh, you know, result. There are a lot of lenses now available which are true EDOF lenses, but with all of them, there is that compromise. You're going to get your N6 by leaving the patient minus half or minus 0.75. Symphony, the oldest lens, by virtue of the JNT material, has got a lot of advantages, but with its etchlet design, gives you an elongated focus. Symphony people say, you'll get an N8 at 40, which I think is pretty good. At the most, you may require glasses to read, you know, very fine print. Um, there's the Alcon Vivity, a lot more expensive. Uh, it's got a dome-shaped elevated plateau in the central 2.2 millimeters, one micron high, which actually stretches the wave front, giving you a constant extended focus. Uh, they, they also claim to give you an N8 at 40. And then there is the Miniwell. Mini -well. Now what the Miniwell lens does is it's, cut, it's converted into three zones, the central two millimeters, two to three millimeters, and beyond. Now, by, by inducing spherical aberrations in the center of a minus uh, two, of two millimeters in the center of a plus two in, a, in the mid periphery, by inducing different amounts of spherical aberration causes a stretch in the wave front and thereby induce, gives you that intermediate range of vision. Um, so finally, now that you've decided you're going to do it, so just quickly touch upon the three important points. One is your accuracy of data collection. That is by far the most important thing irrespective of any lens you want to do. Take more than one reading. IOL power calculation, optical biometry is the gold standard. Aim for closest to emetropia. Always when it comes to K and axial length and IOL power calculation, have at least two or three sets of data. Go with Warren Hill's triangle of agreement, wherein you look at data and at least three instruments, compare, look for a concordance between two, and then choose. And when in doubt, axial length difference of more than two millimeters, silicon oil filled dye, you've got a suboptimal result, or a post-refractive, you know, you do a second biometry. We are in Bombay, we can always outsource it to Dr. Deepak Bhatt to get the second one. If you've got astigmatism, do a topography to rule out non-orthogonal astigmatism, and choose one of the lenses in this platform which has a toric uh, offering, and most of them do. Counseling, I think the first thing we need to tell all patients is the fact that the only, the only lens that can give you near normal vision is the normal human crystalline lens. Anything else on everything else that we implant in the eye, there is going to be some element of compromise. Let them understand how the lenses work, speak in their language, vernacular, with all the decision makers, uh, slowly, quietly, and give them the time to go back and process all the information. When you talk about the lenses, tell them that there's a possibility of lock, drop in contrast. You may need glasses, and then the fact that he may see glare and halos, which may take some time. Also, let him know that he'll have stereopsis for distance, but his near vision needs should be fulfilled by only, um, only the, the second eye that you're going to operate. Also, let them know that despite the best of efforts and best of evaluation, there is a possibility that he may require glasses for either activity and, uh, you know, and uh, that's the other thing. Discuss laser vision correction if you think it might ever be required. And I think you, I also need to tell them at the end that should things go wrong, that sometimes do, we may not be able to implant a multifocal lens in the eye. And my final slide is how do you achieve surgical finesse? I think, I mean, it's important that we try and put in a multifocal in this eye because this is what you've kind of told him you're going to do. 
Be extremely meticulous in your wound construction. Make sure you have a nice centered rexus, 5.5 millimeter, that gives you a 360 degree edge. Make sure that you leave your corneas nice and gentle and your endothelium undamaged by minimizing the energy delivery by doing power modulation. Obviously, you want to avoid tears in the CCC because you don't want post-operative decentration. Obviously, no tears in the PC because that would just take away the possibility of putting it in. Thorough cortical wash. If you've got a small pupil, use pupil expanders, a careful IOL implantation completely in the capsular bag. And my last point is that should you have a subluxated bag, a tear in the rexis, defer the multifocal IOL, even if you promised the patient the same. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Thank you Suvira. I have one question, Suvira. It's a fantastic talk. I just have one question. One is that if this patient has come to you asking for a multifocal when the other eye has been implanted with a monofocal, am I right? Yes. Yeah. So how many, what is your numbers? How many numbers do you have to uh, say that a monofocal will mix well with a multifocal in the other eye? Well, maybe about 10. 10. Uh, there, there well, I've spoken to a lot of people who've been doing it mm. in yeah. other cities here, and they're extremely happy. So they say patients are just really bad. They, they, there's no compromise on vision. Their quality of vision is good. Uh, when, the, when you have combined a monofocal with a multifocal? Yes, so when I've spoken to my colleagues and my own patients about it, I gently choose the right patients, so, you know? Mm -hmm. Like someone like me, cool. even if I had a monofocal in one eye, if I could get rid of glasses for reading, I would, I would, I would take the compromise okay. that came with it. The second question is, have you ever explanted a, a monofocal to put a multifocal in the other eye? No, I haven't, but I've, I put on an add-on multifocal. Okay. I haven't explanted one. Okay. Thank you. Fantastic talk.